You're welcome to another interesting edition of Local Government in Focus. This is a segment on the City of Lagos TV show where we try to showcase, celebrate, project and promote the success story of governance at the grassroots level. You will agree with me that grassroots governance is very strategic because this is the tier of government that is closer to the people. And of course, uh, whatever happens at this level will actually be a very strong determination to ascertain, verify, and of course, find out what exactly has been the story in delivering the dividends of democracy to our citizenry. Lagos State is a very critical state and of course this is a state driven by the team's agenda of Mr. Governor, Mr. Babajude Sonwulu. So today our focus on this segment is Yaba Local Council Development Area under the able leadership of Honorable Kayode Omiyale. Honorable Chairman, you're welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you. Chairman, we are aware of very great giant strides of your office in this LCDA. But first, let's look at, before you came on board, what was the situation you met on ground? Thank you so much. We want to thank God that uh, we came on board in July 2017. And before our administration came in, it was two years after the last elected administration. The last elected administration left in 2014. And within 2014 and 2016, we have what we call the executive secretary, who are the aims of affairs of the local government. And within 2016 to 2017, when, when we came in, we have administrator. And they couldn't do so much in terms of governance because they are just an ordinary administrator. But honestly, I have to make this remark. The government that left office in 2017 performed wonderfully well. He left so many legacies in which when we came in, one or two of those legacies that probably is going down, we have to reactivate them. We start building on it. And our party, they have an agenda. They have a program that they are given to all elected as a blueprint. What's going to be our guide? What's going to be our focus? And this agenda includes, among other things, provision of health facility, provision of good and quality education, environmental sanitation, infrastructure, poverty alleviation, youth development, sports and games activities, security. You agree with me that for some years, the issue of security has been very, very Jamain in our country. So within the 100 days of our office, we thank God that we are able to do so much in the area of infrastructure. Under 100 days in our office, we are able to reconstruct three roads. Amsa Road, Obadinon Road, and Ajaibembe. We are able to complete those three roads. We have nine political wards in our local government. And to the glory of God, we have touched roads in all the nine wards. Like in Ward A, Adekunle, we rehabilitated Bronowe, Olayenka by Makoko. At Ward B, we rehabilitated a very big road. I think that's the largest road. The road cost out about 120 million in 2019. That is Okwagbon by Church Street. And the road that we are doing is not just to put Adba there. It is interlocking with the drainage, cover drainage. And that, that Okwagbon is a road that's been abandoned. In fact, flood has already taken the place. The road has been totally collapsed, and the people are now using Keno to cross. But when we came in, we reverted it back to road. Under the 114 road, during Ambode regime, we were able to do Ishola by Topumbo by McQueen. That one includes street lights. Then, more road, we've just done that one. We have just completed that one. Lawan road, somewhere at Onike, we have done that. At Iwaya, we have done Ibore by Pedro. Then, presently, we are at Abule Jisha, where we are doing Akinshola by Bailey Road. So, we have, we have so many of that. We are able to organize an empowerment program, which cost us almost 40 million. 
And our own kind of empowerment is not just to pick youth on the road or to ask people to bring slots. We have to invite all the artisans went into their association where they nominated people for us. We gave them tools and we gave them wares where they can trade with. Our local government is known for fishing. We have one of the fishing markets in Yabai City. That is Makoko Ashigiri Fishing Market. And we have the people that are fishermen in that area, the Eguns, the Ijaws. So we brought them on board, give them fishing boats and all other fishing equipment to easy their fishing activities. All this under 100 days in office. And our local government is a citadel of education. So we took the issue of education as priority, starting from giving GC forms to 100, 150 indigenous students. And immediately they have their results, we invite them. Whoever that has five or six credits that is qualified to enroll for JAM, we enroll them for the JAM. So also we are having 100 JAM forms for the indigenous students. By the time they pass their JAM, we monitor their admission to those people that are able to get cut off marks. Thank God we have all the segments of education in our local government. Talk of College of Education, we have it. Talk of Polytechnic, we have it. Talk of University, be it private or government, we have them in our local government. So give them some moral support. We give them some administrative support that whoever that choose any of the institution within our local government, we give them all the support to gain admission. And in the area of environmental, the governor at the state level at that time, in person of our body, came up with fish scape, where he's trying to come up with another way of discharging the solid waste and some other thing. Our local government took active part in that. We have a designated areas where people within the community can discharge their waste. We distributed containers in strategic places. And not only that, we're able to purchase compactor for the local government that is going around the local government at least twice in a week to complement the effort of PSP. And at the same time, we are collaborating with the market women and the CDA on how to take care of the environment. Our local government is prone to flooding, so we could not fold our hands. Many at times when we have heavy downpour, many areas used to submerge with water. In Makoko area, in Iwaya area, in Abloja. So we are giving them day-to-day -day enlightenment that, look, don't discharge your waste in the canal or in the drainage. And at your own level, don't wait for the government to come and clean the drainage within, in front of your house. You can do that on your own and make sure that even if you distill the drainage in your house, if you cannot pack it, if you are aware of it, we'll come there and do it for you. So we are collaborating with the CDA, with the market women, the community leaders, and some other things. And we thank God that we're able to achieve, you know, some progressive results. For youth and women empowerment, is there any financial support for women who are into small trade and all that? When we are talking about artisan, it is still within the region of the youth. It's the youth that are doing uh, fashion designing, or uh, barbing, or mechanics, carpentry, or whatever. Majority of these people, they are youth. You see, uh, we have been very careful in giving out funds because we are not only training them how to fish, but we are taking them to the pond. We take them to the river. We put them inside the fishing boats <laughs> where necessary at times. We do a sort of check and balances. We give you so much, what have you achieved? If we discover that, oh, this person is a good manager of funds, we can try to uh, add more to it. That is what we did to celebrate our 100 days for the second time. We did a very wonderful empowerment where we selected 100 traders, youth and aged. We picked them on their trade, even people that are selling pure water by the roadside. And we gave them 100, 100,000. And apart from that, every month, we used to gather 80 aged people and 20 widows. We go to their community that, okay, in this community, give us 80 aged people from 60 years and above. Then the widows, within 40, 35, 50, we give them stipend, 10,000, 20,000, just to support them. Also, we educate them. 
Now look, in our local government, we have this health center very close to your place. Go there, do simple, simple checkup. Check your BP, check your prostate cancer, check your sugar level, check all this. And it's going to be free. How many health centers or health institutions do you have in this LCDA? And what are those things you've done to improve their capacity to deliver quality health service? When we came in, in 2017, we have four PAC on ground. Very unfortunate for us. One of our community, we, where we believe that we have the highest population in our local government, that area doesn't have any PAC. So we took it upon ourselves with full determination. And under our two years in office, we were able to you know, establish a very big, in fact, it's the biggest PAC in that community. And it is more equipped, very close to us here, at the Kule area, Ayetoro. That is where we have it. One of the major challenges we have in the area of it is personnel. We don't have enough personnel to mount this area. At least three of our PAC out of five are running 24 hours. We need more doctors. We need more nurses. We need lab technicians. We need pharmacists. We are working towards this. On our own, we have to employ doctors. We cannot give them full employment. We hire retired us, retired matrons, in which we are using in our centers, just to keep the place going. So, Chairman, area of security, how safe is Yaba LCDA? To God be the glory, in Lagos State today, Yaba is the most safe local government we have, and I will tell you the reason. One, at our own level, we used to have our monthly peace and security meeting, which consists of all the security agencies community leaders, traditional leaders, market women, all those major, major stakeholders. They are members of this community. And what do we look at? We look at how safe our environment. We look at, is there any area where we believe there's a sort of drugs activities? Is there any area where we believe that courtesy has been a major issue? Even up to the traffic management, our local governments, we have about five army barracks, and we have three major police formation. Going to Sabo, you have Sabo police station. And all the police stations, they have their own police post. We have one police post at Makoko. We have one at Iwaya. We are trying to establish another one in Ablioja. And all of us, we have been cooperating. Whenever we are having our meetings, representatives from all these formations, including the area commander, do attend the meeting was in a while, when he has the opportunity to do that. To also complement the effort of our policemen, in 2021, we have to give two utility vehicles to all the police formation we have. We give the area commander one vehicle, Banti here one vehicle, Adekule police station two, Sabo police station two vehicles. The vehicle for the laboring is the local government that responds for the servicing and maintenance of those things. We know that the major security challenge that we may have is to the youth. So many at times, we used to have interaction with our youth. We have a chat with them. We organize programs for them. Sometimes ago, we organize a sort of music fiesta where we put them at a rope park there. OK, come and show your talents on how to sing, DJ, and some other thing. We have it. We have organized one sport activities, which they tag after my name three years ago, somewhere around the Ablijesha, behind the Yabatek. So we have something like that. You've been watching local government in focus, and we've been speaking with the executive chairman of Yaba Local Council Development Area, Honorable Kaiode Omiyale. Now, chairman, let's look at education. We're looking at the public schools because the level and the quality of education in the public schools is very important. How many public schools do you have in Yaba SDA? And what have you done to improve their quality? According to Nigeria Constitution, primary school is program of the local government. In Yaba SDA, we have 26 primary school. Then we have five vocational centers, in which we call home account centers. Then we have one special school. That is Mudupe Memorial Handicap School at Akoka there. In the first instance, when we came in, we rehabilitated three primary school, military primary school, St. Agnes primary school, then it's another school at uh, Makoko there. Then we built 
a primary school right from the foundation, two-story building with 21 classrooms, head teacher's office, sick bay, high city rooms, library, in which we named after our senator at that time, first lady of Nigeria, in person of Senator Dr. Oluremi Tinubu OON. So we have the school at Onike there, Senator Oluremi Tinubu Mode Nursery Primary School, Onike. Then every year, we used to supply exile books to all the pupils in primary school. At least a pupil right from primary, even from nursery to primary six, will be given a pack of 10 exile books together with school bag and mathematical set for primary four, five, six. We celebrated Children's Day where we bring all our students in our schools, give them they do it, mark pass, engage in one activities, singing competition, reading poems, and some other things. And we give them, you know, something for refreshments. Then we inherited an abandoned library, if I may use that word. It's a library that was established during colonial era, but the place had been abandoned for so many years. So when we came in, took it upon ourselves to rehabilitate that library. We have completed the structural aspect of the library. We want to equip it, and we are trusting God that in a couple of months, we want to put in place what we call a library. We are working towards making a place, ICT centers, where the place can be used for either jam, exam, GC exam, or all other international exams. Because we are, we are contemplating to have nothing less than 300 computer systems there, together with servers, and we make it available for the students, university students, polytechnic students, secondary school uh, students. We, make, we give them the card that make them, you know, to have access to the place. The Lagos State Governor has, of course, been inaugurated for another second term. When we speak to other local government chairmen, they are always full of praise of the governor uh, for his very kind support. So what has been the level of support you've gotten from the governor? In your LCDA? The support has been very wonderful, tremendous. You see, one of the things that we enjoy, we local government enjoy, is even when our other people are clamoring for autonomy, autonomy, in Lagos State, our allocation has been coming as at when due. The money given to us is not being, we are not giving directive, go and spend it on this, go and spend it on that. The only thing is that go and do projects, go and touch the life of the people. And that's what we are doing. The states have been doing a sort of fatherly role for us. Whenever we have problem on any issues, we run to them and they assist us. They bail us out. Whenever we need their support, they are always on ground to give it to us. We can see that our state government building hospitals here, renovating hospitals here, appointing medical personnel and some other thing. We also, at our own level, we try to emulate that. And we are working towards that. Chairman, uh, what's the success with regards to revenue generation? How is the local government able to sustain itself, despite the fact that, of course, you get allocation? Because we know Lagos is uh, a state that people want development, and it's expected that they are supposed to be able to fulfill their civic duty by paying their task. What's the story in Yaba LCDA? In the area of uh, our IGR, it has never been an easy task. You will agree with me that people don't have confidence in local government administration. They believe that local government, you just collect the government money, share it, and go out. They don't expect that local government are doing anything. They don't accept that Lagos State, the, the, the local government are building hospitals. They don't expect, they don't believe that local government are building roads. They don't, you know. So they find it difficult to pay the normal rates that we're supposed to collect from them. And that is rate on radio and television. Then, the market stores, and what have you. We had to pay it so much, it's maybe 5,000. But people find it difficult to pay. But we have our own mechanism that we put in place. Whenever one, one of the mechanisms we are using is that whenever anybody has something to do at the local government, probably you want to do barrier, and you want to use government cemetery. One of the levy that you are going to pay is television and radio levy. You want to use our registry, one of the levy that you are going to pay is radio and television. Even if, not, even, even if you are not going to pay another one, you must pay that one. Any activities that you want to enjoy at the local government, you must pay that one. 
And once in a while, quarterly, we use what we call revenue drive, in which all officers will be on the field, checking receipts, your levy. And we make it as a point of duty. Within the first month, the two months of the year, all the bills has already gone to whoever that's supposed to pay. So, and we do the follow-up. And our last three years, except year 2020, when we have COVID, that's when we could not do anything on revenue. But all other years, at least we have been having 85%, 90% results in our IGR. Let's look at training for the local government workforce. So what kind of training have you been able to organize? Since I have came on board, uh, we used to send our staff to staff training school Magodo. At least nothing less than 10 staff will be sent every year, in which we are going to pay for all the tuitions, all the materials that they want to use there. Then apart from that, our HRO, Human Resources Officer, is always on ground to make sure that we organize in-house training for the drivers, the cleaner, the messengers, the clerk, the clerk officers for performance. Since our inception, at least we have sent officers abroad for training. I think about two months ago, we sent the house leader and the CM to France for training on local government development activities. And about two weeks ago, about five, including myself, were in Abuja for training on the product productivities as far as local government is concerned. What are the future plans? for women, for children, for health, for road infrastructure, because these are expectations of yes. people. In our future ambition, in, in the area of health, one of our health center is not functioning very well because of the situation of that area. The health center was built on a water lodge area. And by the time they built it about 10 years ago, it was not well constructed. They didn't do, they didn't do enough piling for that place, and the place has sunk. So if any little rain falls, the whole uh, will mess up, and people cannot work for two, three days. So we are planning, God be on our side this year, we want to demolish the place, so we want to rebuild that place. And all other health centers too, we want to make sure that we put more equipment there, and we are still appealing to the state government to get us more medical personnel. We have written to the NYC that whenever we have copper who happen to be a medical personnel, be a doctor, that they should consider us. Then in the area of empowerment, the other time I mentioned that we gave out 100,000 to some people. Anytime from now want to go out to go and assess the performance of those people. Then before we leave the office, we want to make sure that all our primary schools, we are able to create an enabling environment for the students and for the teachers alike. Not only the infrastructure, but putting the necessary furnitures for the pupils to learn, for teachers to work. So we are working towards that. God be on our side. We want to make sure that the issue of flooding in our local government become things of the past. We will try as much as possible to clear the canals, clear the drainages, and we have been working on that. And I want to seize the opportunity to thank Lagos State Government, who have started working at Oyadiron canals, going down to Makoko, to Okwagmon canal. Lagos State have already redredging that area. And all other secondary, primary, Drainages. We as local governments will not relent on our effort. We are going to do that. Fishing is a major economic activity in LCDA, Yaba. Are you trying to uh, blow up the commercial potential? Sure, sure, sure. For the past three years now, whenever they are doing International Food Day, where they invite the communities, the market to come and showcase agricultural products, our local government have been coming first. And what we use to showcase is the fishing activities. Apart from giving the boats or whatever you, we are also giving them the drums for whoever that want to do the fishing rearing within their homes. We give them the, the materials to do that. So we are giving them support. Honorable Miele, you are a man of so many awards, humanitarian award, award against sexual and gender-based violence in Yaba LCDA, most compliant council 
on IT and so many other awards. Honorable, tell us uh, what is driving you? What's your driving force? We believe in the in the policy of both federal and the state government. This is what they want us to do. This is their vision. We play along with that vision. For example, the ICT compliance. In 2021, the local government uh, service commission established another unit in all the local government, that is ICT units. And we remain the first, we became the first local government that first of all established that ICT and put all the necessary equipment there. We are not working in isolation. We partner with so many organizations. Any organization that spread the hands of, hands of fellowship to us, we play along with them. What's your relationship with traditional rulers here? We have an officer in charge of chieftaincy. We have officers, we have a cabinet member as a chieftaincy officer. Every year, we used to host the traditional council, which comprises seven local governments. From this place, mainland, Apapa, Suruliri. And under that, we have three traditional rulers. Now we now have about five of them. We have Obagbobi Sabe. We just installed Ulu of Iwaya. We have Obaloto of Oto and Lagos mainland. We have Ojora. We have, in this senatorial district, we have the highest number of ballots, about 18 of them. And all of them, they are on our payroll. On a final note, Chairman, what's your word to the residents of Yaba, LCBA, your workforce, and to other stakeholders who have also given you all the necessary support to make these great achievements? Let me start by saying that um, to congratulate the people of Yaba and Lagos in general, congratulate them that they're able to bring back our performing governor. And for Sonwulu to come back for a second time, it's a blood tonic in the body of development of citizens of this state and the local government. We are going to give ourselves a sort of matching order to make sure that to whom much is given, much is expected. So I want to assure people that we are not going to relent on our efforts. We will not take the support they are giving to our government for granted. We will make sure that they enjoy the dividend of democracy, even more than what they are bargained for. We, we will try as much as possible to touch the life of the youth, to touch the life of the aged, to touch the life of the widow. And I want to commend my staff, the career officers, even the politicians, the councillors, the cabinet members. They have been very wonderful. Then I want to commend all our partners, the private organizations that have been working with us. I want to tell them that our doors to open. And uh, since all of us were looking for the development, the growth of this local government, we are ready. Our door is open 24 hours. Come to us. Whatever they need from us, we will do it. We are giving out tax holiday that, okay, for your first year, extension in this local government, don't pay any levy to local government. And many of them reciprocate that guest house. We have an, an hotel in, in this area. We power the street lights within that community, about two, three rows in this area. It's, it's putting street light there. We have seen an organization that, you know, construct, we construct the road in this community. And when we, when we say that, we commend them, we give them some kit of uh, honor, and we give them some uh, relief. And whatever they have, whenever they have any problem, they run to us. So these are some of the things that we have been doing. So Executive Chairman, I want to thank you for coming on the program. Uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Interestingly, uh, the story uh, we met here today uh, gives us a clear indication that um, your administration and your workforce at the Yaba LCDA is working and is delivering the dividends of democracy to Lagosians. And so it's been a wonderful time speaking with the executive chairman of Yaba LCDA, talking about Honorable Kayo De Adejare Omiyale. I want to simply describe him as a man of action, result-oriented, dynamic, and vibrant in delivering quality leadership to 
Lagos residents in Yaba LCDA. We've been able to look at, in a holistic picture, the various efforts of his administration to deliver grassroots governance. And so we want to wish him all the best. And so the City of Lagos TV show on the Lagos Local Government in Focus segment will come your way again next week. Hey,